morning everyone it is Sunday it's creeping up on noon close to lunchtime and clearly based on the fact that I'm eating chips while I'm doing this means I'm ready for some lunch anyway um, yesterday was Mel's meat and I wanted to talk about it I told her I was going to do a, a video log and just give you some general information about some of the things that we did. I won't go into a lot of specifics just because this tends to be, I drone on and on and it can get very long winded and I'm trying to whittle these down a little bit. So let's get to it. First, great day, eight for nine. And if you saw a video of that last deadlift, you just don't get any closer than that without actually completing the lift. So I'm gonna go through what we did in training briefly and talk about the, the day of the meet. When I met you guys at Pose in Nashville when you had competed, I knew of Mel. We uh, had talked quite a bit online and I had helped her briefly some time back. I, I don't I don't recall the particular time frame, but just some Olympic lifting type stuff. And I don't I don't actually recall the full extensive part of what we did, but it was brief. She was working on it, and I don't remember now why we stopped. She would have to tell you that. But uh, I've known of her. We, we are familiar with each other, and we have talked to each other a few times. And uh, she asked me to come aboard and to help her get ready for her meet. I'm going to tell you something about this and why it's important. I have been doing this as a lifter for a really long time. Longer than some of you have been alive. I have been a coach for a long time as well. And regardless of how much I know, how much experience I have, and the things that I've learned, the people that I've you know, been taught by and coached by and worked with and, and all those things, there's always room for improvement. And it's good to have somebody that has an experienced eye look at what you're doing, look at your training and, and those types of things. So even a coach needs a coach. I think that's a smart move. I think it shows not only being intuitive, but it shows wisdom and beyond her years. She's, you know, Mel's a young woman. And the thing that I appreciate the most about Mel is she's very impassioned about what she does. Uh, it's not just, you know, that, that the activity of coaching. It's, uh, you know, her spreadsheets, you know, the way she does business, all these things she does with, with quite a bit of vigor. And she is definitely invested in the lifters that she's working with, doing the very best that they can. And I share that sentiment. You know, I... I try to become, everybody that I work with, I do my very best to be as invested in them as I possibly can be. So I like to have somewhat of a personal rapport, and I feel like Melissa and I have that. So, that said, when she talked to me about coming on board, I think we had eight weeks to her meet, which is not a lot of time, especially with a new coach working with a lifter that is new to them. So I had to learn on the fly. I generally like to have about four weeks, you know, watching someone lift so I can identify what their tendencies are, not, not identify issues. You know, sometimes you just, you just have to see what the lifter does. What are their, what are their tendencies? What is their, their personality when they lift, you know, and, and what's their style? And we didn't have a whole lot of time. So I, did a little bit of research, looked at some video, and got to work. The thing that we probably, I'll, I'll give you a couple of specifics with each lift. One of the things that I'm a stickler about is just plain and simple to set up. We all have a tendency, and I believe I covered this the day that I spoke to you guys at Pose, is we have a tendency when we set up the squat, if we're walking it out, we stand up with it, the pick, we walk back, get our width, and then we're ready to squat. Many of you will kind of grind the feet or, you know, what I call waggle a little bit before.
before you commit to the stance you know that you're going to use for the lift so that was one of the things that i really wanted to work on get the pick step back get your width brace and be ready to go the clock is ticking when you get stand up with that weight so every second that passes by is is using using energy that you need to complete that lift so you know that was something i was really really on about the other thing and she had a good time with this is what i call pace when you're loading so pace to the pocket when the pocket being getting in the hole of the of the squat the one thing that you notice if you watch the videos is how much better her loading is there's a lot more tempo to the pocket and therefore she's able to be the more energy and tension that we create getting to the hole the more dynamic we're going to be coming out of it and with that tightness and, and bracing her bar path was really really good so she was very very dynamic the other thing that we did is I you know we didn't we didn't squat these weights in training we kept a certain training percentage that we the framework that we worked in so this was a new weight you know this was an unknown weight if, if you will and one of the things that I really try hard to teach is you only have so many max attempts in you in a given cycle and I want to save all that as much as we can for the day of the meet and to Mel's credit she did that I, and I know it was hard because she questioned it more than once and to her credit she believed she trusted me and boom we have a we have a new squat PR and let's be honest if you looked at those videos if she maintains that form that was 150 kilos 330 pounds she's clearly a 155 to even 160 kilo squatter which let's see 145 is 341 to 352 and I firmly believe, you know, a little bit of time, she'll be she'll be in that area really quick. And those were the things that, you know, that we improved upon in the squad. We did a lot of things where, with the assistance, not a lot of things, we did a lot of safety squat bar squatting because I wanted her to immediately drive back, lift that chest up and engage the hips, pushing the groin through. Now that, there's a delicate balance there because you can you can go awry really quick and again it was something that she questioned and that's not unjustified but she did it we kept working on it and the form got better and with that she became a better puller and a better squatter and this is all in the framework of seven weeks because we had seven weeks to train and a week to deload for the meet and and how you pull that off I, I, is you know she has so she has a good amount of experience and and that really helps it's not something that i would have gone to as openly with, with a newer lifter we would have been a lot more conservative the other thing is i wanted to do was make sure that our attempts were well within the framework of what she could hit based on on the weights that she was hitting in, in training and i knew 330 was very doable and that gives us the most bang for the buck. How you build the, the most important thing in powerlifting is total. And the way you build the total is, is execution and hitting those lifts. Going two for three in the squat was not something that was a goal. We wanted three strong attempts and we got that. And so we max, we maximized the weight that she got. In the bench press, the other thing too is loading, is how she loads. We want to get it there a little quicker but we want to create tension and maintain the tightness so that her form is good. Her bar path improved dramatically. I attribute that to the decline work and her pressing power. Again, attribute that to the decline work. But she really, really held form. I think some of the issue with getting to the, the touch point a little quicker is some it's bicep tendonitis. I, I think it's probably too strong here, but it, there's definitely some tightness. And so we're working on that, and, and I'll go into that another time. But again, you saw that her 176 was not limit. We maximized the attempts, and she comes away with a PR, and we know that she has 181, 187 in her. And we gotta start thinking about the building blocks and the steps to get to a 90 kilo, 198 pounds, to 
92.5, which is 203, 204. And I think that's certainly doable. So the other thing is with deadlift is we change the grip from a conventional alternating grip to the hook grip. That was pretty different and it's kind of scary because she didn't have a lot of time to work on it and to be confident. Now that lack of confidence I think cost her on the third deadlift and, and she thinks that too. We had that discussion and you know I'll let her tell that story. <clears throat> But you can see she's becoming more definitive, and this is a lesson for you guys as well, is once you bend, you break the hips to bend down to grab the bar, you're engaging in the lift. And so you, you, got to, you don't have to go fast, you don't have to be impatient, but there has to be some urgency, even, you know, albeit under control, and you have to grip that bar, square the shoulders, and, in, and load and engage in the lift. The longer you take, that's when the doubt creeps in. And you saw that on her third attempt I think the strength is there I think a little bit of work and she pulls that and then some <clears throat> but that was the major change in how she she loads into into the pocket into the starting position I'll break that down a little bit more because a lot of coaches everybody right now is about that neutral spine your head position where you, you don't have to necessarily look up and not to have your hips too low I, I disagree with that with some lifters. This is why I say I like to have four, um, four weeks so I can, I can watch the lifter and learn their tendencies. And, and this, this was something I spotted right away with, with Mel's because she reminds me of my Melissa with her conventional pull. Both of them uh, pull hook grip. And we'll go into that where, they, where they're their loading position and their actual start position when they actually engage into the pool. We'll, we'll go into that another time. The thing that was great is that, you know, we always want to have the best results possible. And the only thing that Mel didn't do was simply push the hips through to the top, you know, and, and finish the lockout on the deadlift. But the effort, the real success there is that kind of effort. When you know that you have in your pocket that kind of effort, that kind of grit, and that kind of heart. You got to earn it. You know, you got to learn that. You got to learn it to earn it, so to speak. And grinding is something that is a very much. It is an art and, and a skill set that you have to acquire. And and the other thing is that you're walking away from that, where you're confident in the hook grip. You know, it's like I held on to that weight. You know. And never it never came out of my hands and that you know that just speaks volumes of the heart and the willingness to, to go that extra step you know to try to compete complete the lift so eight for nine day you know PR in the squat in the bench and total and we're looking at you know breaking out of over that 400 barrier soon and you know we got to look at what you know getting over not only 900 how do we build to that 925 950 area to create a platform for her to become a top 10 lifter in the nation certainly has that capacity I couldn't be more pleased I was I was very happy with the results and and got to got to see got to learn that there is another gear to Mel and uh, and that's super exciting I was very I was very pumped up and I told her that and it inspires me you know I'm I leave uh, a week from today as a matter of fact to get on a plane to fly to Atlanta where I will then make a connection to go to some place in South Africa um, I can't remember what it's called you know and I've got my work cut out for me and you know I'm, I'm not going there just to participate I'm not going just to hope to get a medal I want to win a world championship and when I work with lifters like this on a daily basis, it keeps me pumped up, you know, because I can't expect a lifter to do something that I'm not myself willing to do. And I've trained through some rough patches and, and have, have, you know, had tweaks in my schedule and having to train at different times and, you know, and, and make some decisions that had to, you know, I had to check my ego because I, I want to do my very best and I want to win it's just that simple I want to win and uh, 
so I'm inspired and, and, and I, I love seeing lifters that are open, that, that know something, that really know something, that are very impassioned about what they're doing to the point that they'll go, hey, I want you to help me become better. And, and, and in, in turn, I'm becoming better, not just as a coach, but also as a lifter. So take what you will from that. Man, I hope you guys will look at that and share with Mel what you see and, and what you learn. And I hope that not only am I helping her become a better lifter, in turn I hope that I'm helping her become a better coach. I, I know I'm certainly becoming better. So everybody enjoy the rest of their day. And we will talk soon.